Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to, yeah, it's not quick views. It should be. Do I have a backlog forming? Yes. I have inserts to test. I have tire. I have more than one set of tires to test. Uh, I just, you know what I do? I don't think about it. We block it out as never was. Because it's the, well, the thumbnail would have shown. It's the line cutter. It's the man of the live stream. It's sporty. Kind of. Uh, sporty kind of. has got. And I've been calling him Esky. Uh, like SK. Uh, there's, a, there's a grime rapper. Esky boy in the building. Uh, so I get the Esky in my head. SK. Stage killer. Sporty kind of. I was I was rooting for Spider King, but Spider King does sound presumptuous. Like, okay, let me break it down. So we're gonna wheel into frame here something that has zero wheel time, zero. I just finished. Well, honestly, redoing it again. So he did have wheel time. Earlier this week, Canyon had a visitor. He brought his rigs over. We drove. We had a fat. We had a fabulous day. I, I I wheeled off camera, which doesn't happen that often. So I got to shake this thing down, kind of, because numerous changes were made during that session, and I have changed it substantially since that session. So I threw it across the scales. You are going to witness a sea change in how we do things around here because the same gentleman that was here earlier uh, when driving the same time as this gentleman, he dropped off the Sky RC scale system, the old one, the one with the wires. And it has, I, I understand, he does not like it. And let's do a little capsule Let's do a little capsule mention here. Here, here, here they are. There's the, there's the dangly scales, and there's the little central unit. It's pretty great. His problem is, uh, my problem as well, do you see how rounded the scales are? Do you also see how small the scale pad is relative to a tire? What can happen is, if you have a low enough pressure tire, it can hang over the scale pad and actually touch the base of the scale. Also, if you have the wheel five millimeters off center, these will rock and give you an improper measurement. So weighing it on this is actually slower than weighing it on four kitchen scales. It's kind of neat though, because it shows me my left right balance. It gives me total weight. It gives me front rear percentage. There's just a little bit less math that needs to be done. So the, the, the big change that you'll be witnessing today is we're all, we're all metric now. Esky all metric. Look at those. Just nice round numbers. We're going to go over the numbers. Firstly, I had asked, does anyone think that we should try the 2-2 stretch? We've got, uh, as was suggested by a channel member, Kenya Zonquish uh, wheels. These are Robo Kitties, old outers because the weight of Robo... Actually, when the wheels were on Zoidberg, Zoidberg broke all of the spokes on the outers. I have them right here. Let me, let me find one that looks... Okay. I don't know how well that... Yeah, you can see it right there. Broken through spokes there. I think there's one... Nope. It's broken there, there, and there. Right across three spokes. So this is too little of material for something of Zoidberg's Hulk. This guy is 2,405 grams, pretty much spot on in American units and freedom units, 5.5 pounds, and I am content with that. But because this is a really broken one, because these are broken, uh, another channel supporter uh, copied these. I sent that off to Send Cut Send and had these cut just. 6061 aluminum discs. And then I did the cleanup hard work. On the inside, they are still the carbon fiber from the Amazon low cost tutu beadlocks. And then these are, you might be able to tell by the heads, there are real, there are genuine vanquish hubs 
on the insides of these because we're going, you can see, narrower track in the rear, a little bit wider in the front, but it has narrowed him down significantly. Uh, for those who remember your last visit here, he was 11 and 3 16 wide, which was like 285 wide. He is now 10 and a half inches, so about 267. So 20 millimeters narrower in the front, and then in the rear, he is down to right at 10 inches, which is like 254. So 30 millimeters narrower in the rear, and has shed a fairly significant amount of wheel weight because they were just, well, the beauty was I didn't even ever have to dis disassemble them. Uh, I didn't even notice I weigh, these are rears. Uh, uh, last time we wheeled, we were on, these have brass rings in them. So these are 280 grams a piece and I didn't pay attention to that. So it might've been like this. It might've been like this. It might've been like this. I didn't pay, I didn't notice until I was setting them on the scale when I took the set off to weigh the set. And it's uh, just right about 900 grams for the set. I think it was 918. These are significantly lighter. This is 160 grams per corner. So we're looking at 640 for the whole, for the whole deal in total. And they would have been even lighter uh, had they been carbon fiber outers. But that aluminum adds about legitimately about 10 grams per wheel. So instead of 640, we'd be at 600. I'm not going to go out and buy another set of wheels to save 40 grams. Uh, he's got aluminum hubs, so he has no added weight in the wheels. They are just the factory J-Concepts foams. And because we've eaten up a fairly substantial amount of the sidewall, uh, look at how crazy that looks, uh, it, it doesn't he doesn't roll the side at all. No matter how much weight is put on it, it won't roll the tire over. If anything, the J Concepts foams feel a little overly firm, which I didn't think they would at five and a half pounds, but I guess it's that PSI spreading the load. They feel heavy, but he has amazing ability to drive up this way. So it's one of these things where I'm like, are we going to chase that last percent or two? So where most of the work went was this body is really skinny. Uh, as it sits right here, it is 120 millimeters wide. And when I had fabricated these out of the Disneyland aluminum angle, uh, it was about 140 plus the width of the Velcro. So I cut them way down. I cut them way, way down. And then I was out here fighting with the wires, trying to get this thing wired up, and I gave up. I just gave up. I gave up, and I took out the BEC. I took, and he'd been swapped. It's right here. I had swapped in, so AG Innovations Ninja with the 1700, I had swapped in a 10 amp uh, CC BEC. Everything was work electronically was working outstandingly. On an 850 pack, like what's in here, it will run close to an hour. And then I was like, it's it's too much. Let's go super lazy. I had a homeless Fusion 1200. It's got a Fusion 1200 in it now. And it is mounted for the reason that many of us mount Fusion 1200s, which is cleanliness of wiring. So, oh, yeah, uh, again, the, the big DS Power... DS015 is out. I have fabricated a carbon fiber upper mount to mount that guy. Where's the radio? When this thing's got the, the power it needs. Uh, and that that dropped weight. Cutting these dropped weight. I dropped it. Basically, if memory serves, uh, I can't, when we first brought it out, it was 5.96, and then I swapped it over to this and got it down to about two and a half. It was just over two and a half, 2.56, I mean, 5.56. Um, did a bunch of changes, changed out that, cut these down, changed stuff out. It's five and a half pounds, 2,405 grams, 5.5 pounds. To get this lighter, you would have to take some of the kinda off of the sporty and 
because we have a we have a bunch of weight in the core. Speaking of a bunch of weight in the core, at 2,405 grams, it now sits at a 6139 weight distribution. So somehow a uh, big motor, I guess big motor is forward of the CG, so it pushed the weight a little bit forward. We went from 6040 to 6139. The cross weights look substantially better, substantially. Uh, 50.3 level, 50% ascending, and 49.3. It does an odd thing where when, when you're descending and it transfers weight, it transfers all of the weight out of this tire. Like, this tire doesn't lose weight. It, it actually loses about 10 grams. This one loses 50 grams over across so it's a, a little odd thing i'm wondering if it's going to over compress part of the front on descent but it could descend so slowly he could descend so slowly on the on the setup with these with the 1700 flash hobby that you i had to apply power at all times to continue going down or it would just stop and this is a Fusion SE, which is going to have a notable amount more drag brake. How slow can we get it? A notable amount more drag brake than we had in the little flash hobby. The drag brake on these approaches electronic anchor. Uh, I had to, I upped the gearing to a, a count because we're basically, we're going from about an 1800, which is portal gearing, to about a 1200. This is a lot of gear reduction, a three gear with capper axles, and I think I'm running 2052 on the gearing, which I think is very close to the gearing that is in Zoidberg. So the, the, the final speed, the, the, the top end on this should be right about the same as Zoidberg. So I narrowed this down a lot, over, over 20 millimeters. Because now, oh, and I put the, the little bumper guy on just to serve as a guide for the nose of the body. Kind of put that in like that. Drop the rear end down. Put the Velcro in. And now he's super slender. And I could chop even more off of the bottom of the body. But it doesn't seem to scrape or get caught on anything. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about it. Also makes the body sit a little more level. We, we might be in the territory of needing to go up in spring rate a little bit in the rear. We also raised the CGH by a, 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 like a 0.3 inches. So what is that? Seven millimeters. We went up a quarter of an inch. So with the CG raised seven. And that has to be the Fusion. Because the Fusion just adds all the weight in one spot. I don't think it explains the oddity in the way the weight moves out of this tire on descending. We'll see. As I mentioned, completely undriven. I haven't even driven it on the floor since that 1200 went in. I calibrated it here on the bench. I drove it back and forth on the bench a little bit. He doesn't do the big squat. It seems, I mean, it seems okay. I, I'm hope. The sincere hope is that I haven't ruined the handling by changing the motor, and I don't think I don't think I will have. I also didn't do any math. We were running 1756. Where's the calculator? 56 divided by 17. We were running 3.3 to 1 on spurt opinion, and now we're at 2.6, which is about the same as a belt drive. So is that a third? Is that a third? It's 20%. So we've gone down in, so he's going to be slower. We've gone down in KV about 30%, and we've gone up in gearing 21%. So he's going to be a little slower, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, that was the biggest, I, I couldn't find, in, in 3mm bore, I couldn't find a bigger pinion gear. The 20 was the biggest. I think it will fit a little bit bigger. Uh, also, I could go to a smaller spur. Uh, I, I've uh, had to change the spur, obviously. So we're back on the same adapter, but we've got a Kimbro 52 in there. It should it should get the job done. Oh, the amplifying capabilities of the Stage Killer. 
So it's not the outright quietest. There's a decent amount of gear noise from the spur and pinion. But it, by far not the loudest thing you've ever heard. It, like there's no motor noise at all. That is, that is gear noise. We're getting some proper gear whine. Then you slap this on here. It's an amp. It's like a speaker box. It has to double, at least double the volume output of it. So, I think, I think we're in for something good. I think it drove it drove quite well on what was it Tuesday Tuesday a couple days ago it drove really well for a vehicle that I kept making change every time I would bring it in I would make some sort of a change on it and I lucked the wheels well you can see right here they're not they're not nearly as wobbly as one would expect because the, the, the 1.9 is kind of bag up on the inside of a 2.2, and you can really get one off center and get it, wait, more this way. But it's it's pretty good. So let's let's run him about on the course a little bit, see how he's looking. Sporty kind of, the Esky boy. Um, I'm really happy with it now, particularly now that the sides of the body go straight down. It was a, a, a not insignificant amount of time. I probably should have just started over, <laughs> but I wanted to make it out of the pieces that I already had. And also, oi, my, oi, my ve. So this is industrial Velcro that you get in the big rolls. I foolishly peeled one off because I was like, oh, it's going to get hot. I'm going to have to cut it. And when it peeled off, it left the adhesive on the aluminum and just the the Velcro came off and left the adhesive. God have mercy on your soul if that happens. It was 15 minutes getting that off. Heat gun, goo gone, scrubbing. I had little, the glue as it was melting was like bonding with my flesh. That's, I guess that's the, oh, the box is right here. I guess that's the industrial part. The adhesive on the back will glue you to, to whatever you might be touching. So we're looking at good numbers. Um, the, weight, the, the weight transfers look pretty good, except for that oddity on descending. And there is nothing left to do but grab cameras and uh, see what he can do. Now, so long as my aimless tinkering has not ruined this entirely. We should be bouncing from setup to setup pretty quickly because we've got 36% front overdrive. We've got ruptures stretched. He, he exhibits tendencies. Kind of wanted to see the descent. Yeah, I don't. If there's something to notice, I don't notice it yet. Pull up. Ooh. Yeah, come up. Oh. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Well, I mean, a shuttle's gonna be too easy for this guy. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no real hesitation. I gotta say, higher CG. And it was a, an, an, an overall weight transfer that resulted in the CG moving up. I don't... Yeah. We, we may be in the territory of net some good. I think... I still think the inserts could be softer front and rear, but... His ability to get vertical, which we'll see again here in a moment. Yeah, there was there was no there was no pause right here. Nothing. Let's see the non-dig turn in here. Dig it over a little bit. Yeah, dig comes on really quick with that Injora. Uh, 
confusingly named in Jordan 2065. I guess they're trying to get in those search results. It, it's what they're offering is for a direct replacement for diff lock and shifter on Traxxas vehicles, the Traxxas 2065. The problem with Enjora is they didn't just kill it, they overkilled it. Uh, it makes 100 ounces of torque and it's 0.06. So it's, it's almost double the spec of a Reef's 55, but it costs $17. So I'm buying these things three, four at a time. So glean from the experience of a few days ago and the heightened expectations that I have now, we are gonna, we're gonna make this guy sing for his supper. We're gonna make him do approaches and lines that are ordinarily not the approaches and lines. I do love the, the, so we went from the snappy, super quick response of that back ironless Flash Hobby 1700. That thing, that thing spooled quick, right? And we've traded that in for good old FOC. And it feels like, it feels like we have a diesel now. Like it's low revving, but you get that constant trigger pressure and it just, it just goes. Like there's, there's no hesitation in it. I thought for sure, I thought I was dropping off to the inside there. All right, now you gotta do stupid stuff, guy. There's no, there's no, there's no way around it. Oh yeah, that. The feel of that 1200 SE. Ordinarily, the, the, the more right you are, the closer you are to that rock, the more difficult the approach is. But Dieski boy, he don't care. Does not care at all. Also, in equal measure, when you come around left, you've got this little foothold rock right here. We get to the side of the light and people can't pull here. doesn't play by the same rules. There's a different set of rules that he must obey. Gravity is only loosely obeyed. Yeah, this is a guy that if we're if we're driving around in just these ordinary spots, we're kind of just messing about. All right, part of me said uh, I should I shouldn't do Daphne's because you should you should be able to notice this is all new. This is all new. I had said that I had wanted to redo that. It was a lovely day. I added a couple bit of uh, Washington State rocks uh, are scattered in amongst here. I added three rocks total. Everything else was just dug out of the little saddle section and turned to those. It is definitely not set. Uh, I put a new footer down here because when it rains really heavy, the water runs right across the bottom of Undertaker here and it was starting to gut it out. So we'll see. So that 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 little foot down there at the bottom, I mixed it a little rich. It is not dry. But uh we'll put some we'll put some ruptured tread on it. Yeah, we, we left a little tire mark on that one. Yellow's got a tire mark over at the bottom of Slick Rock, so. Okay, no dig yet. There, there should also be a lot of overspray from working on it. I see his rear tire picking it up. Probably could have dug that into position a little better. Let's try it. Yeah, the, it's plenty. The, the, the bump speed is, it, the bump speed is more than adequate. So I am happy with that. So we're not gonna fuss with any of these lines over here. They are too fresh. Yeah, that's that's not leaving dirt behind. That is pulling the concrete up. So there's a couple spots over here 
Not as good. There's some better spots at Anomaly. Tiniest hesitations. The, the movement of the weight, I gotta say, it feels better with the fusion in there. Yeah, it's super, super stable. He does indeed, he turns almost sharp enough that it makes me go, I mean, do we need dig in there? He doesn't have dig, he's a sporty. Try to cross this way. Ooh, I see it. Driver rear. See, then the dig is rewarding because it allowed me to move the front end over. Okay, are we gonna belly up on this? I won't be surprised if we do. Oh, he wants it. I think it's gonna push me out too far to the side. Yeah. He had a real, on, tu on, tu on Tuesday, he had quite a little bit of a snappy tendency, would get to a certain point and then away we go, we're gone. That's gone. And that can't be the tiny bit of weight and width that I removed. That has to be the power plant. I mean, it's the only thing I can think. He was on these wheels for most of the day. And they are 100% doing the thing. Yeah, he, he's, he's too close to being a sporty where, like, what is the point of just driving around on a rock? He's going to be able to hit most any line. So on that day of wheeling, there have been some minor alterations made to the front, uh, the front nine, uh, including but not limited to the upper mark here at gate seven at the, uh, at, well, I mean, we need a Jerry Ryan golf ball because it's seven of nine. Uh, and Eric, I, I re-drilled the hole for the upper, I'm blind, I'm blind. I, I re-drilled the hole for the upper marker so that that upper marker will stand up straight. Because what was happening was it was leaned over and when you would even make any contact with it because the base was leaning, the ball would just fall off. So we stood it up straight. It doesn't really make it any easy. It makes it a little easier if you're something like this guy, but it doesn't make it remarkably easier. And the spacing is still the same. It, it, it's actually a little overspaced. It's one of the, it's, it, it's about an inch wider than the other gates, but I would have to move the low ball in and we still want it to be possible. And if you're driving out here with something with like a body and fenders, it's just possible. You can just make it. If you have a body, your body will swing to the low side or you can end up doing a little tire movement at the top side and knocking the top one off. So this is not the type of vehicle that we should use to set up obstacles and gates because he's going to ruin it for everybody. So we'll go a little bit out of order in order yet out of order we'll try to get through eight eight has turned into the bane of my existence particularly when driving this guy there are other rigs that i can get through this one pretty easily uh I did the same thing that the, the upper ball is now stood straight up but because of that slope in the middle that that underhang you have to try to get up as much as you can over here but it get, it, this is not an in-between the wheelbase obstacle. This is an in-between the track. So that's usually what happens. And then, and then you knock it off. I have failed to clear gate eight even once uh, since I, you can see there's a, little, there's a little nest that the upper one sits in. 
since I widened it out, I, I never hit the top one. So I stood that ball up and just made it easier for vehicles that already make it. This guy can't make it at all. And I have probably tried 50 times. I really need a longer lens. You see him though, right? I was like, why is he so loud? Let me see if I can point with the antenna. So the base right there, there's a little, there's a little screechy boy just yelling. I was like, man, he sounds like he's so close. They are so unbelievably fat. I don't know if his fatness shows up at this distance, but these guys, these guys eat well. And why I'm not scurrying to alter his setup to such a degree as where I can just masterfully pass through eight is because here at, I, 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 I tried to go too smooth. Yeah, the stage killer is on this setup, on a capper axle width, it is tough to self right if you allow it to get all the way upside down. It just kind of wedges itself into the ground. I was gonna say, provided I don't act a fool, uh, this guy has no problem here at five, but I haven't driven five with him. Not since he changed stuff. Yep. So here's what's happening. I wonder if we can straighten it with dig. The passenger rear is biting too hard. I need it to slide. His weight transfer looks great though, because it's not, it's not throwing it. Well, the cross weight is working. So that instance of, yep, 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 pivot a little more. That might be too low. Are we gonna fall? No. Okay. So, he can do, except eight and nine. Eight and nine are the absolute murderers out here for this guy. But four and five, which is Hans, and Judy, Judy, Judy on the other side, usually those are the gates that, that kill you. But he can do five. I feel like even with the 36%, it feels like the rear is overdriving sometimes. Not something I'm accustomed to. I don't wanna jinx myself, but he can generally just breeze one through four because I can keep this up towards the stripes, stay clear, Judy, 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 do the cut back there. And if you don't drop back towards Judy on that part of the ascent right there, you're pretty much through. This is one of those gates where you can tell it's gonna go bad really early on. And the, the drive differential, this is a gate that does not reward big, drive split, 30%, 40%. Uh, baseline with his 12% just drives up and over this, like it's, like it's not happening. <laughs> uh, rigs with no overdrive do just fine here. Particularly if you're wider, this is a gate designed to punish things that are built to do things more like this, the nine. But he can, he can do this all day. Knock him off too. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta mess the joint up. And three is another gate that uh, it tends to be a little more difficult because you get, you get pretty side over, and you need to stay up. So you need to be turning into the fall, which is what you don't want to do. When you're on a slope like this, if you if you steer up the slope, it forces it cross weight forces all the weight under the tire you don't want it to be on. So this is a situation where the, the orientation of the gate makes you have to steer up. So like right there, we have no load on passenger rear, that high side tire. So what's gonna happen is we're either gonna pull straight or we're gonna slide and the rupture has enough, even though you saw the cross weight force the front end down. So this guy is incidentally Sporty kinda, really good at this stuff. So, in closing, while we perform the Midwest goodbye, let's see if he has the wherewithal. We probably get two shots at this. 
This is slot five at Slot Canyon, the Dream Crusher. It is a short list of rigs that have made it through here because what happens is there's a hole down there and that hole will pull you in. So you have to try to stay up here on the side. You'll watch driver rear falling towards the hole and now we're in. Just when you think you're out, they pull you back in. And I hope that's what's happening here as well. Just when you think you're out, I hope that the canyon pulls you back in because you can check out anytime you like, but you can never leave. Let's just claw out. What a guy. Sporty kinda. Um, I am, uh, you know, uh, if anybody knows, is there an, is there an insert is there, is there an insert specifically made for a 1-9 Canyon Trail stretched on a 2-2 wheel? I can't see any, let's try, okay. Conventional wisdom was to get that high side hook. Let's see if we can do this way, which generally tends to just push that front under that bucket and then you're doomed. Ooh, I thought that dig might have pulled it out. Uh, the inserts are honestly the only thing I can think to change. This is a this is a part snapping pavilion, by the way. If you want to break an axle housing, this this is the place to do it. Ooh. Also, if you don't like shiny Lexan, you can you can get rid of it here. I think we're in the, I think we're in the buckets. I can't even, we're, tra we're trapped. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna snap an axle or part of a wheel. And the beauty is trapped, absolutely trapped. Climb it up, climb it up, climb it up. Ooh, this is iffy. Stay on it, stay on it. Nope. <laughs> we're just gonna. We're gonna we're gonna call it before it ends in tears. So I hope you enjoyed your time here. Uh, I could talk a blue streak. I wonder if my feet are in the other cam shot right now. Uh, I thank you so much for joining us here in the canyon. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, if you're watching this on the day that it's posted, uh, come on back for live stream Fridays. Um, yeah, like this is a this is a problem. We have a, you know what the problem is. Ordinarily, I would take this guy right back in and I'd have wrenching to do. I'd be like, oh, I got to do this and that. He's, he's good. So somebody pointed out, uh, springing, insert suggestions, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, built during a live stream, assembled by an idiot, thing is doing A-OK, -okay, right? I wish I could drive out of frame, but I can't and we're running out of time on the file, so. I'll see you next time, everybody. In between now and when we meet again, please one and all do your very best. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you again here from the canyon where uh, a good time is generally had by all. And uh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it for today. What else do I got? Oh, it's quiet. That squirrel stopped chirping. We'll see you next time, everybody.